Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Corden and we're back to continue our playthrough of Go. Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So, we are still in Stalwart, we're getting to know the people around the village, we've spoken with at least everybody on this top side, we had also met this dwarf over here who wants me to go huh, and... That's what I get for asking directions in the middle of nowhere. You weren't here before. Uh, I spoke to this dwarf who gave us a quest to do in this temple of Ondra. But right now we can speak to this lovely blue Omawa here. Say, I don't suppose you've seen any mysterious old buildings in the mountains lately, have you? The Omawa wears an assortment of bangles, bands, cuffs and chains as thick as armor. She watches you with a raised eyebrow and eyes gleaming with mirth. You mean Durgan's Battery? No, but I've heard that name a lot around here. I'm looking for the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. It's an obscure temple dedicated to Andra. It's a death trap. Why are you looking for the Abbey? I'm a gift bearer. My job is to gather tokens of things people want forgotten and surrender them to the Lady of Lament. Best place to do that is the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. What kinds of tokens do you take? Anything that represents a moment or a memory someone wishes to leave behind. Well, love notes, awkward family heirlooms, bad poetry, the kinds of things you want to forget. I see. I might be here a while. Half the villagers have never heard of the Abbey, and the ones that have, no one knows where it is. Hmm. So I'm trying to think of this as an extended holiday in a remote mining village that smells like fish. <laughs> Well, I've got business in the region. We could travel together. You won't regret it. <clears throat> I've got a lovely singing voice. I like her already. <laughs> so we got another new companion, which is Maneha. She is a barbarian Omawa. She's still at level one, much like the rest of my, you know, my roster over here. Uh, she's going to stay there, at least for a while now. Uh, but she gave us the quest, The Burden of Memory. So, uh, I'm considering how I'm going to deal with companion quests, as I'm not exactly sure when they trigger or not, so if I skip some of them, I'm sorry, but it, it might happen. But if not, I'm going to try and do them. Perhaps if I adjust this site so... Oh, oh, it's working! Yes! I can't believe it! It's really... Oh. The dwarven woman looks at you, a disappointed expression on her face. In her hands is a large rectangular box covered in strange dials and symbols. What's working? My ore locating divination tool. Well, that's what it will be. I have to calibrate it. Right now it seems to think you're a copper deposit. <laughs> My Animancer contacts did suggest that a particular strong soul essence might interfere. I'm more interested in minerals in any case. What are you looking for? I'm trying to recreate the instruments that first led the Pargrin dwarves to this mountain. This is my latest prototype. Okay. Centuries ago, dwarves carrying tools just like this one followed their readings to what is now the battery. If I can recreate their work, then I may be able to find ore deposits elsewhere. I was hoping to test it, but my arrival was delayed by word of the ogre attack. I haven't been able to find anyone to venture up the mountain since. Okay, I could go up the mountain for you. Really? That'd be wonderful. I, I just have to adjust the device, you see. Her hands move swiftly over the box, adjusting knobs and dials. It should point you toward metal deposits. We already know the battery rests on some rich veins, but I was hoping to get a reading of the surrounding mountainside. If you can follow the readings to ore and bring back a sample, I can use it to refine the device. Cool. Thanks ever so much for this. Okay. So we got the ore locating device. And the new task, Sacred Instruments. Let me just check something here. Divine the location of valuable metals and test the device on the mountainside surrounding the battery. Is this something that happens automatically or do I need to um, use it somehow? This is Ista's or locate or locating divination tool, or so she calls it. It's covered in an impressive number of bo uh, knobs and symbols, but you aren't entirely convinced they'll all they all do anything. Okay. We also had this from before. <clears throat> okay, so let's go into Ondra's temple and see what they have to say. Because the dwarf outside was very upset that he gave them some heirlooms to toss away, but now he wants them back and they refuse to give him back his stuff. Ooh. What is it? 
I'm gonna wait. How am I getting spotted? Ah, okay. Because I, I want to steal. <laughs> Let's go there. There's also a nice chair. Ooh. Uh, okay, I won't be able to go there though. Oh, and I need to swap my boots before I forget. Right. These are stealth boots. I want my damage boots. <clears throat> there we go. Hey. There's a nice juicy chest over there. On the swordswoman. These look like characters named for combat, so I'm gonna do something like this here. Hey. I'm gonna move it with it there. We have Kesetel and Lafda. Veins course under this woman's pale skin like icy fissures, yet when she speaks, her voice flows warm and soothing. Ondra welcomes you into her embrace. Her features soften into a look of practiced compassion. We're here to ease the pain of your past, ready to take your burdens. With a thin smile, she nods. If you let the goddess help with your hardships, of course. Uh, I want to ask you about Okran's heirloom. <laughs> the dwarf already asked. We gave him the counsel he needed. Slight irritation sharpens her tone. She seems to catch herself, modulating her voice back to a pleasant timbre. And, naturally, we'll do what we can for you too. Ask what you will. Well, Okran wants his medallion back. She brings her hand together, hands together and nods. Ah, Okran, how often we let the shadows of the past become a burden even to others. That medallion, it weighs on Okran's mind. You are kind to help, but what you really need is to cast away those memories. Hmm. He's changed his mind. As a priest, you must listen. I listened to him. Such dark memories, so much regret. We took on his burdens for his good and for the good of the village. His belongings, his past, now rest in Ondras' realm, to be forgotten so that the wounds of the soul may heal. This is the will of the goddess. Let's suppose Okran has moved on. Tell me where his heirloom is. He hasn't, and that's the point. Laughter crosses her arms. Besides, you have no authority here. I wonder what the village's leader would have to say about that. You think we don't act in accordance with the local customs? The village knows we're here to help the unfortunate, like Okran. They trust us. I can keep asking for a long time. <laughs> a flash of color invades the priestess's pale skin. I see there is no dissuading you, and you seem, she glances you over, a person of will. Very well. Not sure what triggers this. Laftus' irritation seems to subside as fast as it rose, but you notice a lingering sense of alarm in the glances of the, that the acolytes exchange after her outburst. Oh no. Okay, thank god. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a fight. Okran's heirloom was taken by Ixtli, chosen gift bearer among us, to be cast away as an offering to Ondra. Only he knows where. She pauses and looks at you intently. You could ask him yourself, but he's on a track through the mountains of Durgan's battery. If you run into Ixtli, tell him he has urgent duties to attend here. Okay. Well, tell me about your gift bearer. Ixtli had business near Durgan's battery. Those mountains are dangerous. Lafta seems to stare at the floor for a moment, but you notice her eyes dart to one of the acolytes, a young man of Ixamital blood. If you insist upon carrying out this request of Okran's, then that's where I'd search for answers. It's kinda hard to believe that only the gift bearer knows where Ondras' offerings are cast away. Is it? Our goddess frees us from our earthly burdens. It's best if only one of us knows where they are taken, lest we all end up suffering under their weight. Okay, so let me ask you something else. Uh, I heard that worshippers of Barath visit, visited you recently. Little happens around here that doesn't end in the mouths of villagers, but you're obliged to assist everyone, regardless of their faith. A group of women came to us, yes. Their leader wanted to know of Durgan's battery. I obliged and pointed them in its direction. They left as quietly as they arrived, which didn't make us any less concerned about their true intentions. This place has grown dangerous enough already. Okay, well, farewell. Hey. And I'm guessing she pointed to this guy. 
A young man dressed in sturdy leathers glares at you. The creases in his face, tanned despite the scarce sunlight of the region, suffer a slight twitch as you approach him. I've got nothing for you. Speak with laughter if you must. He turns away, his nose wrinkled. Hmm. Alright okay. then. Okay. So, can you tell me something about this guy? No. Weird. I wonder why that character is named and we cannot interact with him. Maybe for a quest in the future? Let's see. We probably also updated our quest. Uh, what is it? This one. Oh, no, not this one. Uh, this one? Ah. Lafta claimed that only Ixtli, a gift bearer, knows the location of Ukran's medallion. Unfortunately, it's not a journey near Durgan's battery. Okay, so we would have to go there to find him. Uh, next stop, the fishery. Oh, wait. As you step outside, the heavy wooden door of the temple slams shut behind you. You hear someone barring it from the other side. Well, that seems fishy. It sounds like the priests have engaged in an agitated conversation. You get the sense that they are discussing you, but you're also certain that the door is too thick to eavesdrop through. Although there may be other places nearby where you'd stand a better chance. Oh, can't believe this. What is it? Okay, so wait. I'm gonna equip my stealth boots. Not sure if they do anything, but... Ooh. The wooden shutters of the temple's window, closed tight, muffle a set of voices coming from within the building. I, I love this artwork, by the way. I always do. You can't quite make sense of the murmur, but cracking a shutter open would likely help. A rusty iron latch holds the window's shutters closed. With care, you should be able to unfasten it without being noticed. I'm, I'm a very dexterous character, so I'm, I should be able to do this. Let's unfasten the latch. Oh god. You carefully begin to lift the latch from its metal hook. Halfway there, the rusted iron resists with a screech. You freeze, listening to the voices in hopes the priest didn't hear. Their conversation continues uninterrupted. Let's pour some oil on the latch. You grab the latch and apply just the right amount of oil, nudging the metal until its rust gives way without a sound. Carefully, you pull the window shutters open enough to let the voices flow through. You hear a man speaking, his tone agitated. You do that, hope the mountains will do it, what if it's... His sentence cuts as if the man were speaking to all sides of the room. Suppose he tells them instead, what then? You recognize Loftus' voice responding. Why would he? And with all those dangers near the battery, our gift better won't delay. I expect... The man interrupts her. You always expect. Look where they've taken us. A dying village. Ogres at the walls. Ixley's not back yet and now I have to do his... His voice drops and seeds, muffling what he has to say. After a moment, laughter replies. Do you think I wanted this? That I could have known in advance? A pause ensues, its, its tension growing until the priestess's voice cuts it in half. We can't wait for him. We must fish out the last batch quickly. After that, we'll decide. This sounds weird. The man responds in a broken voice, barely audible. You only distinguish the last words. In that rusted wood pond, I'll go. That exchange seems to end. Cautiously, you step away from the window of Ondra's temple. Hmm. A pond in rusted wood. Oh, and that's the character we were... Okay, the named one. He has a blunderbuss, it looks like. Hey. Okay. This door appears to be barred from the inside, does not budge. Okay. So now we have some extra information about what to Fresh do here. Fresh fish! Freshly caught! Okay, sir. Effigy dies! It looks at me! Ah! What? A fish looked at him. <laughs> he got scared and panicked away. But we know why. A dozen pair of globular eyes stare up piteously, 
from the discarded hands of the day's catch, awash in a pungent sea of fins and innards. Let's sift through the fish scraps. Your hand runs up against something round and fleshy the size of a melon. It is smooth and scaleless, and parts seem to be covered in hair. A discarded head, perhaps, but not that of a fish. Let's poke the head. The head shifts deeper into the barrel's slimy recesses. Pull out the head. <laughs> With one hand on either side of the head, you begin to lift it out of the barrel, only to have it leap from your grasp as the head's owner springs over the lip of the barrel in an eruption of fish chunks that rain down over the market stall. Awesome. And here we have Zahua. The man who leapt from the barrel stands facing you, nearly naked save for a loincloth and drizzled in fish viscera. He is covered head to toe in scars, tears and punctures, and the thorny imprints of lashings. Most are faded, like old memories. Despite that, the condition of the man's body is remarkable, the drooping skin at his flanks and elbows the only evidence of his advanced age. His face is placid, but the rest of him appears prepared for anything. You must forgive, Zawa. I was not expecting you. He looks you in the eye at first, but his gaze drifts now and then, settling on strange parts of your face as though distracted by new discoveries. If he is at all flustered, he gives no indication. What were you doing in that barrel? Zawa scratches behind his ear, dismayed. Resting my eyes, I thought. Waiting for the Malkachoa to bring me inside. Malkachoa. He shakes his head. It would seem I dozed. A good thing my master was not alive to see it. Zawa blinks, leaning in to get a better look at you. His enlarged pupils seem to crowd out his pale irises. Are you... Are you real? <laughs> lie, no, lie, yes. <laughs> yes, I am real. Of course. I meant no offense. But I find it is best to ask when Malkachoa is involved. Malkachoa? A small white mushroom. Ah. I have heard it called Snowcap in these lands. So he's dragged out of his mind. Wonderful. It can reveal the true nature of many things. You have a master, you said. The man traces your inadvertent glance at his scars. He smiles politely. A teacher, not an owner. Zawa is a free man. Well... As free as any of us. I still don't understand why you were in that barrel. I was freeing myself from vanity. I, I see. Did he say sanity or vanity? Well done, there. Consider, how can one be vain <laughs> who is bathed in the smell of dead fish? There is a proud glint in his eyes. Uh... <laughs> it helps to be this handsome. I had the idea when I passed this way earlier. <laughs> I am pleased with the results so far. He smiles at a woman whose head is swiveled towards him as, he, as she passes by, a look of revulsion on her face. Distracted, her toe catches on a stone and she nearly falls on her face. He clapped his hands together. <laughs> yes, quite pleased. Awesome. Uh, do you often smear yourself with fish? Gods, no. What a way to travel the world. The usual way is to smear yourself with the ashes of the dead. Eh. But they do not burn their dead here, so I have to make do with what the land provides. He sniffs the air. Hmm. The cold seems to conquer the smell. Even now, the scent hides itself. Disappointing. Hmm. Those scars are from battle. Zawa glances down at his body. From battle, yes. I left them upon my enemies. He points at various patches of crisscrossing scars. These were struck against fear. These against pleasure. These against hatred. Those down there against greed and doubt. And these... He points to his face. These were for vanity. You made those scars? I cannot take credit for all of them. But I did most of the good ones. His mouth perks. I put them there in battle to remind myself what is real and what is not. Our worst enemies are inventions of the mind, pleasure, fear. When we see them for what they are, we become unstoppable. 
And you have achieved this. I feel I have been close, but never for more than an instant. In the moment when the pain is sharpest, the world becomes clear. In that moment, I am a match for anyone. He gives a slow, assured nod. Your wounds must have caused you to suffer greatly. Of course. I am fortunate to have suffered so much. Jesus. If I did not suffer, I would not aspire to free myself from it. Uh huh. I would wander from one unfulfilling goal to the next. More wealth, a better station. My soul would wither. But to search for a place beyond suffering's reach is to nurture the soul. To harden it against the elements. He clenches his fists in illustration. Suffering is the greatest gift the gods have given us. I disagree. Their most beautiful, <laughs> perfect creation. It is the hand that turns the wheel. His eyes gleam as though looking upon an old and beloved friend. You don't seem like you're, around, you're from around here. I was visiting a monastery not far from here. I found it empty, but I met a messenger as I left. He carried a call for aid. Seeing that he would find no monks at the monastery, I chose to go in their place. Hmm. Zawa is no longer young, but in combat he is still the greatest of the Takan people. It seemed only right that he should go. Stalwart hired me as well. I would not say I am hired. I seek no wage, and I promise no result. I have chosen a path, and my spoils come from walking it. An uneasy frown settles on his face, almost a wince. And this fortress, this Durgan's battery, its people are gone. Zawa would know why. Well, if you seek the White Forge as well, I could use the help of an experienced warrior. Zawa's face tilts upward, his eyes fixing on the sky. He remains motionless, entranced. At length, he blinks as if awakening and looks back at you. He shrugs sheerly. If one wishes to swim, it is no time to argue with the current. I'm sure that We are here, together, in this moment, because a perfect force has willed it. Who is Zawa to argue? He looks you squarely in the eyes, and for once they do not drift. I will walk with you so long as the gods wish it so. So, can you guys guess the class of this particular character, given what he's been talking about? Let's be on our way. And we have gained a new companion, who is a monk, naturally. <laughs> so, same deal as all of these. Uh, when I planned out this run, I was thinking about taking these six characters. Um, but these can also be interesting. I've never played with them, let's be honest, because when I start a playthrough and I bring six people with me, I mean, they've come all this way together with my main character. It kind of feels weird to just leave one of them out to take one of the new ones in. But, you know, that, that might just be me. <laughs> in any case, like before, if I can take him in to do some of his quests, I will. If not, well, that happens. But yeah, we have another companion. And now we're going to go into the stalwart fishery, which I believe is the last building that we have to, to, to explore. And here we can Let's find... Let's have some skewers while we're here. <laughs> sure. We can find a fishery worker. This tattered net appears to have been set aside for mending. The dead eyes of Speckleback, Iron Tooth Pike and Frost Ivor Fish gaze up at you. And these roasting fish provide much of the pungent odor permeating the fishery. Alright. Can what I steal stuff? I can. Let's just wait for the, the stealth bar to go away. Let's go. Not really interested. No! God damn it. Whatever. Fish is closed for the night. Man, I, was, hey. I, I didn't mean to click it. Oh well. We've lost some reputation. I, I suppose that will be fine once I start doing my quests and helping out the people. But it's still annoying. I did not mean to click it. 
We have some loot here. Oh, from one of the ogres. Okay. Me and uh, Sledge are thinking about oh. heading down, joining a caravan over to Donning. Donning? What for? You like your ogres bigger? We'd have work at least, and I'm damn sick of fish. At least you made it here in one piece. Fiara lost her wagon and crew. Brandon Guild does it the best, but there's not much work outside of the fishery. Okay. I was wondering if they were going to give me a quest or something. My neighbors left for New Yarmouth last season, thinking about doing the same. Yeah, so everybody's leaving. Okay, so we've spoken with everybody in the area. Uh, I'm not sure if there's something over here at the mines, but I'm so far away right now that I'm just going to continue going. Uh, we're going to explore some of these new areas. Or actually, sorry, we're going to go back to Kednua for the visitor, which hopefully is still there. Yes. Azuro. And we'll come back soon. Don't worry. I'm actually thinking about picking up another item since I'm coming out of the the White March area back into Deerwood, uh, which is something that I didn't really consider at the time. I'm impressed. Because it was also kind of expensive and I didn't really see it making much sense for my party. But we have so much money right now that if I can if I can show unique items, I'll try to do so. So we're also going to pick up another item before we head back into the White March. Okay, so Azuro. <clears throat> there you are. Good tidings, my lord. I am Azuro, famed merchant, purveyor of many valuable and, dare I say, rare objects. And so I would like to remain. I have an urgent matter to discuss with you. Something you'll want to resolve as quickly as I, I'm certain. Very well, let's hit it. You call your allies together in motion for the petition to step forward. Bow before Lord Piggy. <laughs> it's these bandits, my lord. The roads are absolutely crawling with them, and they have the local merchants in a fright. I'm having trouble filling out my stock. My suppliers say the risk is too great. Nobody wants to hear that the finery sent out for delivery have been stolen by unwashed brigands. If I have no goods to sell, I cannot make a living. Nor can I offer you the many special items normally at my disposal. Ooh. I'll put an end to this. Yes, my lord. What is it you have planned? Azuro watches you curiously, his hands folded eagerly in front of him. I can give him 5,000 copper pieces. My name has worth in these parts. I'll personally ensure the delivery and cover all losses that occur. That should allay any fears. Bandits will be the least of their worries if those merchants don't open up the supply lines. Okay, I'm just gonna pay to have probably the best result here? Quite! A more generous offer these suppliers have never heard, I'll warrant. Thank you. I'll have more goods to offer you in short order, I'm sure of it. Okay, so he leaves the stronghold. And... We got 200 experience. And maybe in 6 days we're gonna find out more? We'll see. Let's take all of this. And now we're going to pick up this special item I was talking about. It's kind of close by. And we've seen it before, I think, twice. But this time it will be mine. <laughs> I must say. Let's go over here. I'm not sure who I'm going to give it to. I'm thinking it there. But I'm not actually sure. So it's Anslock's Compass, that's where it is. <clears throat> where we have that special vendor that sells the soulbound icon, uh, items. A supplicant has arrived in Deerford Village, uh, from Deerford Village, seeking money or an escort. <laughs> you ignore the supplicant and leaves the strong... This, this all happened while I was traveling over here. That's, ugh, that's so annoying, man. Okay. Let me see your wares, of course. So, I want... The company captain's cap. So, this binds with any kind of uh, class. It will give us a one resolve and one to dexterity as well. And it's soul bound. So, we're going to purchase this one. It's 8,000 gold. That's why at the time I didn't really 
think it was worth taking. But right now we will take it. And I will have to think about who is actually going to wear this. The reason why I'm thinking not to give it to my main character here is because I believe there's another um, headpiece that I want to give him. And the way that this kind of works its way up, it, it kind of sounds like a tank item. I mean, it, it, it doesn't need to be a tank item, but there are some properties that make, make it play out as a tank item, I think. In any case, We've picked up the item, we've, min uh, we've talked with the supplicant or the visitor in Kednua and from the stalwart village I want to go into Russetwood. That's the first place we're going to start exploring. And I think I'll, I'll, I'll just leave the captain's camp uh, for the next episode. So that I have some time to properly think about who is going to be wearing this, this new hat. Because it's not obvious who it's going to be. A, a bitter spirit? I don't know what this is. Looks like um, a will-o'-wisp. Bitter spirits. A menpogra? That's not good. Do I have some kind of choke point? I guess this can kind of act as a choke point if I lure them over here. Not sure what oh, this yeah. fight is. I'm not sure what these enemies do. We, we shall find out. Together. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna wait for them to come over here. I don't want to engage too far. Uh, let's see what the man Pogra starts casting and I'm gonna use Durance's buff accordingly. And over here I will simply buff with Aloth. Oh, she has 40 focus points to start with right now. Good. Oh, she's casting the, the thingy. <laughs> I forget the name. Let me see if I can avoid this entirely by charging in. I always like charging in, but then I always regret it because I can't cast a chill fog on top of them. Which, you know, can be a little bit annoying, but still. So we're gonna buff with Durance. The Grieving Mother will shoot, you will shoot. And I'm gonna aim for that guy with a sap. Okay. And hopefully what she's casting is gonna land over there instead of over here. I can knock her down. Okay, so you're buffed up. Let's go shoot. Yeah, I think she hit that area because it doesn't have any of the debuffs. And you should actually just move away from there because everybody's leaving. Where are you going? Oh, knock down, bitch. <laughs> okay, so shoot her. Shoot her. I'm sapping her. Uh, why are you stopping? Just hit something. Okay, and I think I'm gonna want books from Mr. Aloth, like over here. Well, she's dead. Amplified wave. Oh yeah, shoot that. Uh, these are spirits, so they don't do much. Let's just do this. Let's get the accuracy bonus on my friends over here. And that's done. Okay, easy enough. Let's see what I learned about these bitter spirits. Because, oh, I lost one of my hirelings, god damn it. Uh, give me a second. Just a regular one, go for a cleric. So, Cyclopedia, Bestiary. Uh, wait, I forgot the name. Uh, what are they? Bitter spirits. Okay. Okay, they don't show up here. Do they show up as a blight? Oh, 
Wisps. Okay, so there's the Willow Wisp and then there's the Bitter Spirit. They're level 5. Okay, I still have to kill some more to understand how they play out. Their fortitude is extremely low though, which might be something to hey. take advantage of. And this area is quite large. Okay. We're gonna start by going down and then moving up. We shall have a lot to do here, I think. A winter wolf. Okay. This wolf lies in the snow, panting with exhaustion and pain. An arrow has pierced its foreleg, jutting gruesomely from the animal's flank. The wolf growls softly as you approach, tail between its legs. Examine the wounds. The wolf appears to have crossed the hunter's path. A silver arrow juts from the wolf's right foreleg, embedded a short distance into the limb. Even so, you suspect that trying to remove the arrow without knowledge and care would provoke further injury. Um, I'm not sure if I have the stats to do it, but I'm hoping I do. Let's try to remove the arrow. The wolf goes still at first, but the moment you lay hands on its injured leg, it begins to thrash in panic. Yelping in pain, it snaps at your hands and then lunges towards you. Well, <clears throat> we, we failed the event here, apparently. And we had to put him out of his misery. Uh, there, there wasn't much I could do, guys. <laughs> but we have something very important here, which is this silver arrow. This tarnished silver arrow has survived its stay in a wolf's flank, largely unscathed, though the carefully etched fletching has been gnawed on. Holding the arrow makes the hairs rise on the back of your hand. It might not seem like much, but this is actually a part of a unique soulbound item All right, then. that we will be completing uh, in the future. Not one we'll be able to use though, because it's for rangers only, so Sagani could technically use it. But none of my other characters can, which makes me sad. <laughs> oh, the pond! So this should be the pond that the priests of Ondra were talking about. So the other guy should be around here somewhere. There's an ice hey. blight. And the greater ice blight. Can you pass through here? If so, this is a great choke point. Okay. I don't know what these do. I think they have some kind of AoE. If I remember this right. <clears throat> But I'll just keep my people over here. Uh, you just buff with this one and you can just start shooting here. Yeah. Okay. So he's dead. So they don't... I mean, he took a lot. I was gonna say they don't have a lot of HP, but they took a lot of damage there. Well, I'm just buffing. Uh, I can throw out a chill fog, although I'm guessing they are immune to cold. I'm still gonna try it. You shoot that, you shoot that, you shoot that. You can hit that. Yeah, they are immune to cold. It is to be expected. Let's toss out some books over here. And let's try to understand what they're doing. Have they even attacked yet? I'm not... Oh. Misses. Just a normal accuracy. Attack. Okay, nothing special thus far. Let's debuff them and then buff ourselves again. And let's throw out an amplified wave, which should kind of just end this. Oh, she... What? Sorry? Amplified wave. One miss, one grace. Oh, they're immune to crush damage. Ah, oh, interesting. I see. Okay, that makes things more interesting. Did they cast a chill for... Oh, Ice Spray. Mrs. Eder, Mrs. Aloth, and Grace's... Oh, a Grace dealt 34 damage? Okay. 
<laughs> Let's back up a little bit here. And grated ice blight. Let's work on them. How may I help? Okay, you can shoot that. You can shoot that. Much for you. Um. I mean, it's kind of overkill to go for this integration. Let me just get some attack speed here. Okay. There we go. Uh, you, you, and you. Why are those guys stopped? Do they are they ranged attackers? That's not very helpful. Not sure. So much for you. Well, he's stunned now. He's dead now. <laughs> I think they are ranged. No, I I don't know if they are ranged attackers. No, they aren't. They just kept getting stunned. Oh. He was casting a spell, like crashing stones. A lot of materials. All right then. Where is this Wonder guy? Is this not the pond? No, it's a crater. Okay. Interesting. What else do we have? Feral druids. That's something I'm not much of a fan of. Winter wolves. And feral druids. Well, let's see what they do. Typical stuff here. And I want to try and sap this one, and you want to knock this one down. How may I help? Okay, they're just casting their normal stuff. People moving slowly and stuff. You're gonna move in, actually, and buff over here. You are sapping. I want book and book and shot, and you are going to get a vigorous defense. My sap worked wonderfully. Let's blind him as well. Oh, bitch. No. Okay, so he's coming for Aloth, which sucks. So I'm actually gonna sap this one. Debuff them and then buff. And my lady over here can actually throw out an amplified wave on top of Aloth, which will keep him safe from this guy and hopefully also hit all of these. Not sure if it will actually land. Because it is a bit far <laughs> a bit far away. There you go. Prone for five seconds. This guy is still stunned for two seconds. Shoot him again. Let's back away with a lot here and just work on that, that guy. And you can just repulsing seal there. Okay, good, awesome. Man, what? Oh, the stun was from an Aloth blast for sure. Man, this rod of pale shades. really was a massive improvement to all of my characters here. It's only a shame that it's not a... a wand. Uh, I would need two more Sky Dragon Eyes. I'm not sure if there even are more Sky Dragon Eyes in the game. But I would love to get it improved there. Okay. Hello? Hello? So we're killing a bunch of feral druids, we're killing some winter wolves. Let's keep exploring this lower portion of the map. This looks like an encampment. With some jerky. Alright. What else do we have? Ooh. There's something ahead. A spirit? A tattered map. Wait, I picked it up. Oh, does it go into quest items or something? 
This yellowed piece of parchment shows a rough drawing of a cluster of trees, but little else. They could be anywhere in the White March. So, trees, some rocks, a road, and a road, and there's something over here. Okay. Hey. And we have a spirit which I don't trust, so let's just in there. This cracked wooden staff, oh, it's a spirit in the staff, is nearly buried beneath the frost and snow. To your senses, the gathered essence shines like a beacon. Let's examine the area first. This camp is long abandoned and what remains is buried beneath a layer of ice and snow. The staff seems to be the sole item of note. Let's touch the broken staff. You reach out with your, ward with your watcher's senses and feel this drifting soul surge forward as if eager to be heard. A feeling of fear and urgency ripples through you. Here, across the distance spanned by time and identity, you know only that you are out of time. What? Oh. So the guy hit... Oh. Did you think to escape me by climbing a mountain? I would have tracked you across the sea, thief. So this guy was hiding something under this uh, rock or whatever, which is the map we just picked up. And then Nina Goth, and the famous wizard, or at least we have some spells that are Nina Goth something, is coming after him. Please, master, have mercy. I... I kept the grimoire hidden safely away, and I can take you to it! Ooh, Nina got grimoire. The book is nothing. If you had studied a little longer, you might have learned that. But no apprentice of mine will steal from me and live. Okay, he's not a very good person. Wait, no! <laughs> okay, I think he killed his apprentice? Hey. Okay, Let's so I'm guessing that this... maybe Ninagot's Grimoire is hidden in that place with the trees and the rocks and stuff. I shall have to find it because I'm very curious about it. Is this a pond? I don't like the Lag of Faith. I, I don't like them. What is it? I don't like them at all. Are you alone? No, he's not. Those stupid sidewinders, I think they can paralyze. Hey. Well. <clears throat> hey. Uh, aren't we gonna have our first fish people battle? Let us find out here. I don't like these enemies. I have a hatred for druids and I have a hatred for fish people. There's also a troll. The troll is whatever, it doesn't matter. These do matter though. Yeah, especially those brood mothers that cast the cleansing flame. God damn it, man. Okay. So that's my primary target. This guy just casts some whatever spells. I don't know what this one is casting. Okay, let's get in a vigorous defense to try and avoid this stupid flame. I'm gonna try and sap the brood mother. You're gonna buff up properly. You're gonna go and shoot, you're gonna go and shoot, and we're gonna buff with Mr. Durance very soon. Okay, oh, Kana, oh, I forgot that Kana was in melee. Okay, so Kana go over here, we have Vigorous Defense up, let's see if I can charge that guy. I don't think it's gonna be in time though. Let's slow this down. <laughs> Lagofet blowgun hits Kana for 3 pierce damage and paralyzes for 4 seconds. Yay! I hate these bitches. It was who? Oh, it was not the Sidewinder. It was just this one. Is this the symbol for the paralyzation thingy? Maybe. Okay, well. I jumped on top of the Broodmother, which is good. Let's see if I can knock her down. Ah, oh, God. Okay, so you are buffed up. Let's move forward here. Okay, we have a lot of stuff here. This guy is casting spells. There is in the middle of them all. 
but that that's probably fine. I could toss out a chill fog over here, although I would hit a lot. It might still be worth it though. Okay, and with Durance, I'm gonna buff, buff, debuff. The Grieving Mother now has the ability to cast an Amplified Wave, but if that is too far away. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start being careful about these charges. They put me in very poor positions. I could go for a Mind Plague to daze and confuse my opponents. I think I will do that. So I want a Mind Plague on this Lagufeth. You're still fine. I think the Broodmother missed it there with the Cleansing Flame. Awesome. That's what we needed. So we're off to a good start here. I need to come back, man. Uh, I'm actually gonna swap this here. I'm gonna get us a Prayer Against Imprisonment to have my off tank back. Yeah, go there and engage. Okay, good. So, we have a Chill Fog up. You are actually taking a fairly decent amount of damage. What's hitting you? The Lago Fett Sidewinder is grazing for... Oh, they have sneak attack. That's why I don't like them. Okay, I remember now. Okay, so blinded, 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 and not blinded. Let's shoot this guy. Or I could go for a Call to Slumber, which could also be good. I think I will. Yeah, let's go for a Call to Slumber over here, which should hit everything in the area. My Rogue has injured the Broodmother, which is the most important target there. Kana is once again paralyzed, but that's going to be solved very quickly. He actually shouldn't be paralyzed, but... Okay, so let's see. Unconscious, 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 and un dead and not unconscious he's stunned though okay let's let's keep working on this this ice troll is annoying because i can't get past him but i can move over here and start shooting the the brood mother uh, let's debuff and then buff mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're taking a lot of damage. Let's do this. Okay, Broodmother dead. Sidewinder got confused. I think this is because of the Mind Plague. Okay. So I'm gonna work on this guy because he's still up. While this one is still unconscious. Okay. I'm gonna go for an Amplified Wave on Kanarua. Okay, you can actually back up over here. <laughs> hey, that is taking a lot of damage. That's not good. So actually, you know what? We're actually gonna do this over there. Let's move around here. Let's do this. And let's get the Amplified Wave on top of it there who should be focusing on unconscious, unconscious, on this one, not to take the, the attack of opportunity. Okay, you shoot there. Okay, Amplified Wave is gonna be coming out. Okay, good. Prone, prone, prone. Everything is prone except that guy over there. Let's see if I can blind him with my rogue. You shoot this one. You keep shooting that. You shoot this one, actually. What is it? And Durant's... Uh, put out a repulsing seal over there. Try and help out Kana. Oh, I mean the... I forgot the goddamn chill fog. Um, go there. Oh! Okay. So, you are... Shooting that one, that's correct, okay. Uh, go help out, maybe. Like, engage with this guy. Let's see if I can hit the paralyzation on these guys. Maybe they're too far away, I'm not sure. 
Okay, I've stunned the Sidewinder with my rope. Okay, we actually did paralyze both of them. So work on that, knock this guy down. Shoot this, hit that. Dude, the damage we're taking, man. <laughs> 31, they have 105 accuracy. Jesus. Okay, okay. Amplified wave. Although I don't really need it that much because these are just tanks. Yeah. I'm gonna go for a silent scream over there, maybe. Yep. You can actually charge this guy. Stop hitting me. Okay, that works. In that case, <laughs> amplified wave. Okay, so, who are we focusing on? You're gonna go over there. You're gonna shoot this one. You're gonna shoot this one. Okay. They are very resilient. Holy crap. Now let's go for the disintegration here. It missed, of course. How much do they have of fortitude? 130. Okay, screw that. That's not gonna work. This guy is knocked out. He's not dead. Interesting. Book and book. Do I need fire? Kill them? I'm curious. Um, I can actually try this out. Although they are frost trolls, so they're not gonna take freeze damage. Let's summon some ogres. Okay, help me out, please. Uh, you are going to paralyze this guy because the will score should be low. Okay, he's dead. You go there. You shoot there. Okay, paralyzed for 11 seconds, good. Knocked out. He's gonna come back up. Dead. Go for this one. See, and these will have to be left for last, always. They are very obnoxious. <clears throat> okay. I wasn't expecting this All to be right so then. tough with so few fish people. But there is a reason as to why I hate them. <laughs> they deal a lot of damage. And they have very high accuracy. They drop their livers, which is good. Okay. Okay. And okay. Yeah, fish people, trust me, do not underestimate fish people. It will not go well for you. What else do we have? We have Dark Ghouls. I'm actually... I should be ending the episode because we're about... Time. I do want to keep exploring this though, but I'm gonna have to leave it for the next one. Because this is a very large area, there's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of fights. So yeah, I am gonna end the episode here before it, it gets too prolonged. So. As always, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pillars of Eternity. I hope you guys are enjoying the White March in this initial area of Russet Wood. Uh, we still have more than half of it to explore. Uh, we have some Dargles over there that we've seen. And I really, really want to find this. This X over here. This is probably Ninagot's Grimoire which should be a very cool item for Mr. Aloth over there, with hopefully some new spells. Uh, before the next episode, I'm also going to try and think about who is going to get the company captain's cap. I'm not even sure if it's going to be a permanent item for them, but I kind of want to show it off and play with it a little bit. Uh, we'll have to see who takes it. As always, if you guys have any suggestions or questions, leave a comment below. 
If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There are episodes coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone. Espera.